Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Disney MGM Studios and our 10th annual Siskel and Ebert special called If We Pick the Winners. Now, this is the program where Gene and I tell you who the Motion Picture Academy would honor at the Oscars if they were as smart as we are. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune, and every year we, and maybe you do too, complain about the selections of the Motion Picture Academy. So, we do something about it. We hold our own award ceremony with just two votes, Rogers and mine. And this year we also polled viewers of our regular review show, and we've tallied their votes in the top five categories. Okay, and on this special program, we don't make you wait until the end of the show for the top categories. We start right out at the top with the category of Best Actor. I have found the answer to the dreams of America. The nominees are Warren Beatty, who played the gangster who invented Las Vegas in Bugsy. Look, what do people always fantasize about? Sex, romance, money, adventure. I'm building a monument to all of them. Robert De Niro is a psychopath seeking revenge in Cape Fear. I don't think we really, really understand what we're talking about here. 14 years. Anthony Hopkins is a brilliant, persistent serial killer in The Silence of the Lambs. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Nick Help Nolte is a man daughter. with a tragic childhood secret in The Prince of Tides. You know, I didn't even have to tell you. I don't want to talk about this. I don't know, that's always been the problem! And Robin Williams is a homeless person with a magical vision in The Fisher King. Jack, ye of little faith. Jack, there has to be a grail. What were the Crusades? The Pope's publicity stunts? Now, the viewers who phoned in on our Siskel and Ebert poll selected for Best Actor Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Land. <laughs> and now we'll see if they're smarter than you are, Gene, because here is Gene's choice. Gene's pick for Best Actor, Warren Beatty in Bugsy. Absolutely. A little smaller applause. That's right, I'm picking... <laughs> That's Mr. Beatty's brother-in-law there. That's right, I'm picking Warren Beatty, and for me, the vote was between Beatty and the People's Choice, Anthony Hopkins, but whereas Hopkins just had to find the right menacing tone, you know, and hold it, I think Beatty was all over the emotional map in Bugsy, giving his best performance in years. Is that yes or no? He's required to be romantic opposite Annette Benning, where he dominates her at times. Oh, oh, oh. He also is docile and supplicating at other times. Right now, Mr. Resta is having a tremendous amount of difficulty imagining anything he doesn't want from Miss Virginia. For years, I've complained that Warren Beatty has been too cute in his pictures, too precious, too self-congratulatory with his performances. Not here. He's vain and vulnerable. Warren Beatty gets my vote. I think it's a terrific job. Well, without telling you whether or not I voted for Beatty or not, I will say that I really thought he did a great job in Bugsy. And one of the things he did was he made palatable a monster. What surprises me in this movie is how ruthless he is and really how cold his relationship with his lover, Virginia Hill, is. Let's see who I voted for. Uh, Roger's choice for best actor. I think you're going to like this. Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs. Now, for me, this category came down to a choice not between Hopkins and Beatty, but between Nick Nolte and Anthony Hopkins. And when I decided on Anthony Hopkins, it was because no performance in any movie for many years has had more of a visceral effect on the audience. I'll help you catch him, Clary. He played a villain, a serial killer, and a lot of actors have played evil, malignant characters over the years. But Hopkins avoided all of the cliches, including the temptation to overact. No, that is incidental. That is a performance that's going to be remembered for a very long time. Hopkins somehow achieved a strange effect, I think, in that film. He gave us a perverse and evil man, and yet somehow he made us not exactly like him. I'm sure we don't like Hannibal Lecter, but empathized with him in the same way that the Jodie Foster character did at one point in that movie. I think that some of the script that he was given break the character down for me. All right, let's move on to our next category, which is Best Supporting Actress. Rose. Diane, you work too hard. The Not nominees are Diane Ladd, the mother whose southern home is invaded by an oversexed young housekeeper in Ramblin' Rose. Could you really take Rose's womanhood away from her when it's all she has got? Juliette Lewis, the teenager who hates her father and is intrigued by the vicious killer who is out to destroy him in Cape Fear. So you're that guy that's been hanging around the house? 
You're the one that killed my mom's dog. Kate Nelligan, the ruthless iron-willed mother in The Prince of Tides. And then you proved him right by killing him, you stupid cracker. Mercedes you Rule, the long-suffering girlfriend of the emotionally troubled Jeff Bridges in The Fisher King. As far as we go, what have we been doing here except time? Have I, have I ever pressured you once, ever? And Jessica Tandy playing a gentle variation of her driving Miss Daisy Southern Lady character in Fried Green Tomatoes. You know, I don't feel 83. Sort of slipped up on me. First before our choices, the polling of the Cisco and Ebert viewers reveals a preference for... We had thousands of people call in on our 900 number. Here's what they like best. Jessica Tandy in Fried Green Tomatoes. All right, here's your choice. Kate Nelligan in The Prince of Tides. What impressed me in this movie was that Nelligan, like Anthony Hopkins, created a bad person that you could somehow almost understand. I made a promise never to speak about that. In a way, she plays a worse person than Hannibal Lecter because she's not as sick, and so she bears more of the responsibility for the selfish and harmful things she does. Here's a scene with Nick Nolte where you can feel and almost hear all of the things they have not said to one another over the years. You know what your problem is? You dwell too much on the past. I never look back. When I say goodbye to something, I close the door. And as we see how she raised herself up from abject poverty to the big house up there on the hill, we see a willpower so relentless that her kids kind of got lost in the shuffle. Well, she does a very good job um, here, Roger. And it's a picture that I thought was filled with over-the-top writing and over-the-top performances. I exclude her from the group. Kate Nelligan does a real good job. Open up my envelope and see uh, who I uh, voted I'd be very happy to see who you voted for. Let's see here. Gene's choice in this category. Mercedes Rule for the Fisher King. Yeah. My pick is uh, Mercedes Rule. I think that she is clearly the best, despite my not caring for the Fisher King. And I don't think the Academy does enough of that. Vote for a fine performance in a film they didn't like. If you're gonna hurt me, hurt me now. What did I get? I couldn't have gotten from anybody with no name any night of the week. It's a very fresh performance. I wish when I saw the Fisher King that more of the story had been about her and less about Jeff Bridges and Robin Williams.